Many of you have seen my previous video on testing for brake calipers when they're on a car. In this video, I'm going to show you how I test them when I take them off a car. Uh, there's many times when you might find a caliper dragging on the car. You really don't know which piston is dragging. You may not even know for sure it's the caliper. Uh, sometimes it can be a flexible brake hose which has deteriorated internally and is causing the brakes to stick and not release and that will cause the drag. I've had customers replace calipers only to find out it didn't solve the problem at all. So it's always best to take the caliper off the car and get it on the bench and test it before you start buying parts. I've removed this front caliper off an old 240D to test it. It was showing signs of dragging so I knew the only way I was going to be able to find out what's going on is to take it off the car and find out if these pistons are moving freely. On the older models there are two pistons in the caliper, one on each side, and I need to get a tool in there and squeeze on that to see how easily the pistons are moving in and out. If they're not moving in and out, that usually means it's corroded internally. And if they're stuck completely, then the caliper has to be replaced. I have found the very best tool for testing brake calipers is this great big channel lock plier. I can come in here and adjust this for the width of the caliper housing. Get on the piston and on the back side, oh, need to adjust it in a little tighter. And then I'm going to squeeze. I don't have to squeeze very hard, but if, but in this case, look, I'm giving this full pressure and that piston isn't even moving. Let's flip it over to the other side and try this one. Now this piston is moving a little bit and you can see brake fluid coming out of the fitting here, but it really should be moving in very easily. Let's compare it to a new or rebuilt caliper that I have here. I will readjust the plier. Note here how I just have to barely squeeze and that piston comes in. If you find that your caliper is taking a lot of pressure to move it, then I recommend you either rebuild or replace it. If you want to rebuild it, from my experience, I found that if you can't move this piston at all, it usually means it's too corroded and it's probably better just to get a rebuilt replacement. If the piston is dragging and you can move it in and out, then you could consider getting a rebuild kit and just replacing the seals. If you don't have a big plier like this one here, you can also use a C-clamp to test the piston travel. So what causes a brake caliper to seize up? and fail like we've talked about earlier? There are two reasons. Number one is a lack of brake fluid changes and the other is the lack of use. Now lack of use, you can solve that one by just driving the car more often. But most of the problems I've seen over the years are pretty much due to a lack of brake fluid changes. This should be done for two years and I've seen cars that it's been 15 or 20 years since the brake fluid has been changed or flushed out of the system. I recommend that you do pressure brake breeding when you do this job because this is the, the best way to make sure you get all that old fluid out of the system. If you don't have a pressure bleeder, you can do it the other way, the old pump method, but keep in mind if you have an old car, you could damage the seals in the master cylinder if you use too much pumping action because they haven't, it hasn't been used a lot. So I recommend pressure bleeding. Anytime you replace brake calipers, always, and I'm going to repeat, always replace these flexible brake hoses unless you know this has been done in the last five to ten years. So if you're having any problems at all with your brake systems, we carry all these parts, supplies, and kits on our website. Be sure and check them out.